Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. Uh, today, as you can tell by the title of this video, we're going to be doing the final steps to get this red car legal for the road. It's registered, it's insured, it's got a license plate, um, but it's not inspected yet. We have a 10 day grace period from the time we register it to the time we have to get it inspected. Um, this car, like a lot of cars in the 80s, has pop-up headlights. Uh, and in this car, the motors that move the headlights up and down are stripped. I think the gears are toasted after 30 years. So uh, we're going to pull the car out and get a little uh, room away from the motor here. And uh, I'll show you what we're working with. As you can see, coming around the front of the car, you've got your two headlight doors on the hood. Uh, if you come around here, you can see this is your headlight itself, your headlight bucket, and this is your headlight motor. You can see it spins and nothing's really happening. Um, so that's broken. For some reason, previous owners got all these zip ties everywhere. Whether they were used to hold the headlights up or what the deal was, I'm not sure with that. You can see even more zip ties over there. So we're going to get these headlights taken out and uh, see if we can diagnose what the problem is. And we got some work to do. So these are all 10 millimeter bolts. There's two here, there's two down below. Um, we'll uh, get these zip ties off here, we'll get these uh, buckets out here and we'll see what's going on. So, as I hope you saw there in the time lapse, we were able to get the driver's side headlight assembly out. Um, and it's clearly broken. Um, you should not be able to do this with the headlight. That's all supposed to be controlled by the motor here. And it's done at a fairly slow rate, much, much slower than that. Um, so, we're going to get this motor off. Luckily, the car came with one extra. So, we're going to throw that on there and uh, see if that fixes it. For those of you who uh, have Fieros and are watching this video to work on your own, um, the four nuts that hold the assembly to the car are all 10 millimeter, and the three bolts that hold the motor to the assembly, the headlight bucket, are all 10 millimeter. No, I didn't pre-loosen those at all. That's just uh, how they come apart. And the nut that holds the motor to the arm is also a 10 millimeter. Needs a little persuasion here. So, 
literally that simple to uh, take apart the headlight assembly. Um, if you want to remove the headlight itself from the bucket, there are three bolts. They're T25s, don't quote me on that, with a 10 millimeter nut. Two on, two on the headlight here, and one at the bottom that secures the that secures the arm to the headlight itself. So the headlight, the motor that came with the car is for the passenger side, so we'll have to grab that one. Alright, so as you saw there in the time lapse, we were able to get the other headlight bucket out of the car and we swapped the motors over without too much difficulty. Now I am going to use my 12 volt power supply here and we're going to hook it to the motor just to make sure the motor works properly as it should. Um, I don't anticipate any issues, but better safe than sorry. I don't really want to put all this back in the car, find out it doesn't work, and just have to take it back out again. Because here at DIY Amateur Hour, we work smarter, not harder. So stick around, and we'll take care of the shortcut. So what we have here is our headlight assembly with our power supply. We have a ground coming out of one side and going into the other side of the headlight harness. And we have our power coming out of the other side and we'll put that into the other side of the wiring harness. Um, I believe that the only, I believe that the way these cars switch the headlights between up and down is they just reverse the polarity on the motors. So it really shouldn't matter which way we hook up the power to on the harness because it'll just dictate whichever way that the motor moves. So let's give this a shot. Okay, that didn't do anything. We're gonna, we're gonna swap the wires around and see what's going on. Okay, I don't know if you saw that, but 
the headlight moved a little bit. So, we're going to swap the wires and try it again. So, try and send it the other direction now. And there you have it. A little bit of a surprise, but uh, passenger side works now. Now we just got to steal the motor off of the driver's side of the black car that you saw in the last episode. I'm going to get the other side working. Alright guys, so we were able to get both motors switched over to the correct assemblies. And we got everything hooked up, bolted in. Of course it always takes a little longer than you expect. So always anticipate that whether you're working on a brand new car or an old car, things always seem to take a while. So check out uh, the first time that these motors are going up and down and uh, making this car finally completely legal. thank you for watching this far in the video as I was editing this episode I realized I forgot to do the outro so uh, basically the car should be road legal now um, it should pass inspection if it doesn't obviously I'll keep you guys up to date and I'll make a video about the, uh, how to fix it and whatever the problem is for those of you who are into Fieros and if you need a little bit more walkthrough or question about the headlight setup on these cars um, I'm hoping to update or improve the headlights um, soon, as you saw. Uh, those headlights need to be improved. As you saw, they're pretty dim. They're pretty old school technology. Nothing like the HIDs and stuff that we have in modern cars. Um, so that's upcoming, definitely in the future. Um, I've got a couple projects lined up for this car, mostly routine maintenance. I still have to wire in the fog lights for the Silverado. Uh, I know at least one person commented about doing that and I got a couple messages about doing the fog lights on that car, um, or on the truck I should say. But as always, if you have any tips, tricks, comments, or ideas of how I could have made this episode better or what you'd like to see in the future, leave it down below. Other than that, remember, you can always DIY.